Right, so I'm at a local mark. There's been some coddling coming out. I've been fishing for about a week. Last time I was fishing, um, either the video is posted by now or not, but it will be soon. I had a nice bass and some nice whiting, all good size. It was a late bass actually, 27th of November I caught it. 26th or 26 the 27th, can't quite remember. Very late in the season, but it's been so mild. It's a, going to be a relatively short session. There's a cold easterly wind. Wind chill's about, well, the wind chill's making it feel about two degrees centigrade. And it's not a big tide, so it should be okay. I'm going to use six ounce grippers. I'm going to fish it two hours down, two hours up. See if my hands can make it that long, because uh, I get pretty cold hands, to be honest. And I'm just keeping it simple. I'm just going to be using Fully panel rigs and um, frozen black lug and some peeler crab legs. Don't have bodies, just peeler crab legs. So let's see, let's see how we get on. Let's put this on. Okay, so that's the rig ready to go. Just bait up. So, ready to fish. Uh, just using up a couple of the sort of tail end of a uh, few frozen black lug here. I always use bait elastic when I'm using frozen black lug because it's, although it's a good bait, because it's been frozen it can go mushy. So what the bait elastic does is obviously it holds it nice and firm to the hook, but what the baiting needle does is it's not so much about making it easy to thread up the line, though it does do that, but it's not really that much of an issue. It's really just about creating a, a brace that allows you to whip the bait elastic around the worm and the hook without the whole thing twisting. And it just makes everything a lot easier. So you can see, it just uh, goes on fine. I don't need that much. Just snap it off. Make sure the hook's proud. Make sure the hook's proud. Get the panel hook, the top hook. A few twists. And it goes through there. Nice bait there. Hooks are showing proud. It's making the most of a couple of bits of all the tail end of some black lug. Right, I'm just going to put this out about uh, 40 yards. Yeah, it's about the middle. Yeah. Now these are the bait robbing culprits. This little shore crab. Carcinus minus, it's a Latin name. These are the ones that are typically used when they're molting as peeler crabs. Here's this little guy back. If you can see that on this camera, well, somewhere around here, I can't see if my finger's pointing in the right direction, but there's a mooring buoy. Come loose, just drifting its way down the uh, river channel, the estuary channel. So that's a pain for somebody. Could end up on a beach after one of the storms. Be a nice beach combing find for somebody. I found an, a really nice orange mooring buoy once. Actually not far from here, just around that headland. Climbed right down to the beach over the rocks, down a mini cliff to get it. And it's now my garden. Coming useful one day. 
Now, just to mix things off a bit, I've got a lug, razor, lug, cocktail bait here, using up some of the old razor fish I caught while I foraged for. Just had the first bite of the session. Very gentle bite. So my guess is um, it's either going to be a small to medium sized whiting, perhaps a flounder. With about the past three casts, the crabs haven't been pestering the baits, they've been coming back pretty much as they went out. So on the one hand that's good that there's no crabs taking the bait, but you know, there didn't seem to be much other life out there either, no fish nibbling or anything like that. So we're about 15 minutes past low water, we're into that slack period. It won't be long before that will that slack period will end and the tide will start creeping in. This is about the time I'd be expecting to catch some fish, see some activity. So I don't know if we're going to see any more action on the rod tip. I didn't manage to catch the, the gentle bite on film. You know, you never know what you might catch because the bass I had last week, which was about three pound, not far off that anyway, gave the gentlest of bites. I mean, it was, it was just like really small and rattly, smaller than a whiting bite. I mean, I was catching half pound whiting on that session that were giving really strong bites. And then the biggest fish I had gave the minutest, gentlest of bites. So you never really know, but if I had to guess, I'm going to say it's a small to medium sized whiting or a flounder. So we'll have a look. I think we'll have a look now. Okay, so the first pulls are releasing the gripper. I can feel, can I feel anything on there? Yeah, there's something on there. There's some weight. It's not going to be big, whatever it is. Oh, this is at the surface. I can't see what it is yet. What is it? It's a whiting, I think. Yeah, so as suspected, small to medium sized whiting. But at least there's some fishy activity out there now. I'll get this back. So, this was the session the week before, exactly the same setup. Uh, same tackle, same bait, except it was fresh lug. But listen to the owls in the background as I was baiting up. The bait I was using last week was actually the same wrap of fresh black lug, except I had frozen them up. Um, but because these were fresh, I wasn't needing to use bait elastic, I was able to use one worm at a time, they were good enough size for a single worm to be good enough. Um, so just threading this up here and then uh, the obviously the top hook of the panel set up. Uh, it serves two purposes, one it, it stops the worm from bunching down into the uh, shank of the hook, into the bend of the hook, and um, which masks the hook point and it just not good to have a little, you know, sloppy, sloppy lump of worm at the bottom masking the hook point. So you, you hold it up with that panel rig, that panel hook here. Um, and in fact, you can see here this was a slightly different hook. This was, I think, a size one of chinu. Winding in here, something on the end it wasn't a fish. It was the, you can feel there was something there, but. I was fairly certain this would be a crab. This spot is pretty notorious for crabs, to be honest, but with the onset of the colder temperatures, I was hoping it wasn't going to be so bad, but this was the first wind in, and sure enough, there was one of those crabs again. And then 
shortly afterwards I did have the first whiting of the session. Typical size fish. And like I was saying in that earlier session, you know, I do, I get cold hands, um, so I like to bring a hot flask, make my tea when I'm there. Really, tea in the flask is horrible, so I like to just make it as you'd normally make a cup of tea, except instead of using the, um, the cup that comes with the flask, I use a stainless steel metal cup, and it just um, sends that heat through the metal faster, and uh, it's nice to get your hands hands nice and warm and you warm your core as well with that nice hot drink and then a little bit into the session half an hour after low tide the tide started to come in a few whiting later had this smallest of bites and this bite I mean I never I never thought this was going to be the bass that it was so gentle, much more gentle than the whiting I'd been catching. So I wound in and caught this beautiful bass. A beautiful winter fish who was caught on that 1 0 top hook. It was well hooked. Absolutely beautiful. Stunning fish, really stunning fish. So that was it for that session, I had done some nice whiting, that beautiful bass. Went home, filleted the whiting up and they made a really nice meal the following day. Quite an underrated fish I think, when you cook them like this, just uh, a simple egg wash coated then with breadcrumbs and uh, lightly fried. Uh, had it here with some potato wedges, garden peas and some lemon and it made for a really nice tasty fillet meal.